on the Kur in Bethlehem. Now, back in the summer, members of the JNF, the Jewish National Fund, and Israeli soldiers tried to take Alice's family's land by force. Um, Alice and her family stood up to this and, and fought the injustice and have begun a really tireless campaign to keep their land. Alice passionately believes that people need to hear her story and those of other Palestinians who are experiencing the same injustices. She's building an interfaith community to stand together to pr protest peacefully. And uh, I'm sure we're going to hear more about that now. So without further ado, Alice, I'd love to welcome you. And um, yes, please, please share with us. You have 20 minutes now. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, especially after I know what must have been a very, very difficult day yesterday, as I'm sure you will um, spend some time telling us. So, so welcome. Yeah. Sorry, Thank Alice, you, before you, Alice, before you start, I just want to make sure the recording's right. It gave me two choices. We put record to the cloud, record to my computer. I've done it to the cloud. Is that right? Yep, that's absolutely fine. Okay. So I didn't want to lose your record. I didn't want to lose your recording, Alice. So thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Claire. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, nice to meet you all. Um, <clears throat> I'm a bit tired after yesterday because um, me and my mom were arrested. It was really hard. I'm going to come to this part, but I'm going to talk about the the struggle itself first. Um, the Jewish National Fund uh, has been trying to steal our land um, through many years, and they took advantage of the war. And um, they, because all eyes were on the war and the media were in on war so they thought that they can steal lands that like they used to um, but this time um, they had to face a simple family who cannot uh, leave their land and will never leave it for them um, this struggle started more than 15 years ago a first they started with demolitions through the civil administration which they have no rights for demolitions and they demolished our restaurant which was a very beautiful uh, place where uh, it was international and for local people uh, it was in a in area c where also palestinians and israelis they can come and join the nature uh, it was an interfaith place without us knowing even that um, everyone can come and join there without any political, uh, you know, inter uh, intervene or something. So, um, you know, the civil administration, they, they destroyed the restaurant four times. And then in the fourth time, they destroyed the house, which was also in a registration process. Um, we have issued a land registration from the civil administration in 2014. And also in the courts, the uh, judge recognized this document, uh, but still they didn't accept. Um, so they, after one year and a half, uh, after 2023, in one year and a half, which is on the 31st of July, they came with a bunch of kids to take over the land protected by the army and the police. So uh, it's it's not only stealing lands; they are uh, they are using kids. It's child abuse, and um, they are taking advantage of these children. Um, they brainwash them. They put them. A, they offer them an agricultural school in other people's land, a, and they do their volunteering hours in other people's land and homes. A, and they brainwash them that this is their promised lands and, um, you know, this is from the Talmud. So um, I don't have a problem with these kids. I know uh, they are brainwashed, but I have a problem with the people who are sitting in chairs and they are controlling these people. Um, I've been fighting this since four months, me and my family and lots of people coming for solidarity um from palestine israel uh international people 
um, we have built a, an interface community which they have never seen in the West Bank, such an interfaith community um, building peace in the middle of a war where Jewish, Christians, Muslims, and other people from different backgrounds can come together and just stand together uh, and fighting for justice against the occupation. Uh, we, have, we have faced so many struggles. Uh, the last one was yesterday, the, on Friday. Uh, one of the events that I had, which is planned a tree day in remembrance of the all uprooted trees, they were uprooted by the Jewish National Fund in the West Bank and in the name of uh, all people who were displaced from their ho homes and lands. Um, I, I entered my land and I started to, you know, plant our tree and then the settlers uh, jumped over the, the, the gate and they started, you know, fighting with us. And also the army who's supporting these settlers, they showed up in few seconds. <laughs> um, and um, it was a big, um, you know, it was a big fight. Uh, and they accused me and my mom for uh, driving over a soldier. They were planning to uh, put me in jail forever um which uh also they ha they have pressed charges against me like eight nine charges also beside this one and uh they were also like you know digging bad things for me and for my mom to keep me away for so many years and thank god um we have everything documented uh the soldier showed the the police just uh, things from one side which he which you can't see anything in the camera but you can hear like he is pretending that we are touching him or hitting him he was like don't touch me don't touch me but you can see nothing in the video so the police believed and when we went to the court we showed them the real video we showed the judge the real video would, would and you she like said, me to share that for everyone to see the one that you sent me or is that not the one um, the, I have so many videos. I can, okay. I I can maybe send it to you. It's also on the Instagram because uh, Amira, my sister-in-law, she has uh um she take a video in live. So everything is. I think we have seventy five minutes live from that day, like everything from the beginning until the end. Um, so um, the judge saw that this police officer or investigator uh, who is protecting the settlers and who the guy who is pretending to be a soldier, which is not a soldier, uh, that they are liars. And they kept me in jail for nothing, uh, me and my mom. And she doesn't see us as dangerous people. And she got us released in the, the, like, uh, in the same minute and they didn't like it. They were planning to get us in jail for nothing, just to keep us away from the land. But thank God, because I trust his plan, I, I, I follow Jesus' teaching and his path, I know that every time we get into a trouble, he can send us the good people to see the truth and to get us out of that. And just before, uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, uh, when the, the settlers attacked me, and I was after the surgery a few days ago, a few days after, sorry. And he came into the car and started to hit me and chuck me. The police did nothing to him. Though I have videos, though I have everything documented, and though I have bruises and uh, uh, scars and everything on my body from them, and still they didn't investigate him. And they didn't do anything for him, for him. just they, they gave him a restraining order for a few days, and this is it. And also I have a, a medical report, which I gave them, and they didn't do anything. And it took them two weeks until they investigate him. But in this case, where there is nothing happened, and he accused me for driving over a soldier, they took me without any evidence. And also they took our car, and they didn't give, us, uh, give it back to us until now. 
uh, it's really uh, putting us in a very uh, stress, stress, stressful, um, you know, situation and physically, mentally, emotionally, just sleeping in jail for nothing, just for uh, defending our land is just crazy. And they know that this is our land. But now um, we have courts. We are waiting uh, until the decision is made. Um, I'm sure, I'm sure we will get it back because when we started this fight, I I was sure that I will get back my land and I will light, light our trees in Christmas there. Um, we will wait maybe a few weeks um, and I hope we will get it back. And I'm sure we will get it back because we have the right, we have all the documents, we have everything. But they are using military orders in order to cover their theft. Um, what they what they did, they didn't come up with eviction order. They didn't come up with any official documents. They are only using military orders. And this military order does not belong to our location. And the name of the area written on this military order belongs to another area. It's like... Um, I'm giving you um, um, maybe the map of Jerusalem, but I'm telling you, no, this is Bethlehem, and you have a we have a military order for that. It's like a, a, two whole different areas. But because um, you know, people in chair, they can do whatever they want in this government, and also we are Palestinians with Israel, Israeli citizenship. Uh, we have the right like any other citizen here but they don't care they prove that everyone living here is still a second class citizen and the settlers are the first class citizen but though no matter how they how evil they plan no matter how big they sit hours in the offices planning on my, me and my family they still lose because everything they plan for Every time they plan to put me in jail, it's just a miracle happens and I go out because there is nothing. And they get crazy. <laughs> they really get crazy because they have never faced such, um, you know, we are powerful because we know that we have the right and we know that uh, this land belongs to Christians and this land belongs to a people in Bejala and Palestine. My father is Palestinian. He doesn't have an Israeli citizenship. So this is his land and I'm defending him. So um, they thought that they can do whatever they want and just, just go because they have been demolishing so many years and no one heard about this story until the land theft, until they kicked us out. But I think um, it's like God had, prepared us for so many years to be strong until we come to this time to fight in the right time because we have been deceived from so many lawyers we hired we have changed seven lawyers in this case so now me and my brother are, are not working with any lawyers we are working alone in the case and we have we have uh, we have filled a lawsuit by ourselves and the supreme court accepted and this was a huge step because we don't we don't need lawyers um i'm only using lawyer for me to defend me from the settlers um from keeping me away from you know a police plans and evilness and their um you know their plans to put me in jail um so th this is a really tough story. Yesterday was really stressful because they were pl they were asking to put me for f more five days, me and my mom in the jail, and uh, even their uh, their police officer, she told my lawyer that Alice and her mom uh, has returned to jail and they will not uh, be in the court, and we were going to the court. 
she didn't want us or she didn't want the lawyer to be in the court just to ask the judge for four my five days so she can manage to put us in a detention for so many years so <laughs> i have a very smart brother and um uh whenever uh there's something he just very smart he's very brave and um he get us out from everything and and um thank god for for having him and for having my family they are really strong and i have learned from them so many uh, things and how to be strong and how to to be patient um it's not easy uh we have we have been in this for almost now 20 times and we have faced more than 25 demolitions the first four were for the restaurant and the house and after the house was demolished we stayed in the land for five years in tents so we don't leave the land uh empty just to take care of it and each time we build up a tent a tent like a small tent they come they bring bulldozers and they demolish it they came 17 times to demolish a small tent which they can just just with two workers they can take it they don't need bulldozers it's just a, a way or their their strategy to to make people crazy to make them uh, uh, tired uh, physically and um, financially emotionally like they are fighting from all the ways but we understand we understand the way they think that's why we don't give them a chance and um thank god for everything and i hope soon everyone will come and visit us in the land and celebrate the victory and the return thank thank you so much Alice, thank you for sharing with us. Um, yeah, I just, I I can't even imagine how difficult the time must have been for, for you and your family. And I, we so appreciate you joining us today um, when you are so worn out and tired from the events of this weekend. Thank you. Um, thank you, Claire. I wanted to add something, sorry, uh, about the interfaith that we had, um, like, a before two months when we had the church built it was built by christians muslims and jews together so it was a unique thing that in one hour and a half um, people from different religions built a church they had the sunday vigil there like the, it was so challenging and the army couldn't do anything but after three days they destroyed it but when we were together there as a community an interfaith community they they couldn't do anything and each time we come up with a new idea challenging them it's they get crazy yeah alice what what is your message to us this this advent season and how we can be supporting you um of course telling the the west that christians are here in Palestine. We we live here. We are here. We are suffering the same thing, the same um, occupation we are living under. It's it's it was never a religious war. It's an ethnic cleansing, and um, it's very important to protect Christians in Bethlehem and in Holy Land because um, if when there is no peace in Bethlehem. In Holy Land, there is no peace around the world because this is the center of the world. And if Christians around the world didn't protect Christians in the Holy Land and didn't hear their voices, there will be no Christianity. There will be no place to visit. There will be like everything will be deleted. History will be deleted. And that's what they are doing because they... They said that after al makhrur we will come to Bethlehem and kick all Christians out. And the majority of Christians are immigrating. And this is very scary and it's dangerous. Also, um, people should wake up around the world that um, it's very important 
to support Christians and Palestinians in general because this is the right time to wake up and uh, just to be united, Christians, Muslims and Jews and other people from different backgrounds, just to accept each other, to love each other and to live in peace. We cannot live in peace if we cannot accept each other. And this is the first step that we need to take. Just forget all the politics. I know politics is everything now, but when we fight politics with politics, we will keep stuck in their evilness. And I don't like politics. I'm doing this because this is the right thing. I'm doing this for humanity. It's not for politics. So everyone deserves to live free, to live in peace, and to live in justice. Yeah. Thank you so much, Anis. Thank you. Um, if you're watching on our YouTube channel, uh, we would really like to thank you for joining us today. Uh, we hope to bring you more from our Advent series um, on our YouTube channel. So please do follow us if you'd like to watch more events like this. Um, but we're going to stop the recording now. Thank you. Um,